Talmud Bavli, Tractate Beitza, page 36, A, part 3, with the words Tashima, Porsin, Machzeles, Al Gabe, Levenim, Mishalas. Come and hear another objection from a Brita. One may spread a mat over bricks on Shabbat to protect against rain. The Brita explicitly permits covering bricks. Rabbi Yitzchak prohibited. Uh, which Rabbi Yitzchak prohibited. Uh, the Gemara rejects his argument. This Brita is referring to bricks that were left over from building and are no longer designated for use in building and which are consequently fit for use on the festival by sitting on them. <coughs> Come in here, another objection. It was taught in a bright so one may spread a mat over stones on Shabbat, although stones are moved. So the Gemara responds, the bright is speaking not of ordinary stones, but of rounded stones. Makur zelot. Makur zelot. Stones, which are fit for use in personal hygiene in laboratory and Shabbat. And are therefore not mutza. Come in here, an objection from a different source. One may spread a mat over a beehive on Shabbat to protect it from the elements, in the sun due to the sun, and the rain due to the rain, provided he does not have the intent to trap bees inside by covering the beehive, covering the hive, as trapping is prohibited on Shabbat. A beehive and its bees are not fit for Shabbat use, and yet it is permitted to handle a mat in order to cover the hive. The Gemara rejects this. There, too, the reference is to an item that is fit for use on Shabbat, fit for Shabbat use, as it is discussing, a hive when there is honey in it, which can be eaten on Shabbat. It is therefore permitted to handle the mat for the sake of the honey. Amr le Rav Ukva. Mar Ukva and Rav Ukva. Rav Ukva from Meishan. Said to Ravashi, <coughs> this explanation works out well with regard to the summer when there is honey. But in the rainy season, when there is no honey in beehives, what can be said? The bride explicitly mentioned the two fra- phrases, in the sun and in the rain. The Gemara answers this halakha is necessary only for those two honeycombs left in the beehive in the winter to sustain the bees. The questions, the Gemara questions this. Are those two honeycombs not muktza? As they have clearly been left for the sake of the bees and not to be used by humans? The Gemara replies, with what case are we dealing here? This is the case when the beekeeper had in mind, before the festival, that he was going to take them from the bees and eat them himself. The Gemara raised an objection to this interpretation. But if he did not have in mind to take them for himself, what would be the halacha? Wouldn't it be permitted to spread a mat over the hive? If so, when the bride goes on to specify that sometimes it is prohibited to cover the hive, rather than teaching, as long as he does not have the intent to trap the bees, introducing a totally new factor into the discussion, let it make a, a distinction within the case itself by saying in what case is this statement said that the beehive may be covered when he had in mind beforehand to take the honeycombs but if he did not have in mind to take them it is prohibited the Gemara responds this is what the Tana is saying even if he had in mind to take the honeycombs so that there is no problem of the hives being moksa, it is still permitted to cover it, provided he does not have intent to trap the bees. The Gemara raises a further objection against this interpretation of the Brayta. In what manner did you establish and explain this Brayta? 
in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda, who in disagreement with Rabbi Shimon holds that the Alakot of Mukta apply. But now, saying the latter cause of the bride to uh, provide he does not have intent to trap. This indicates that even though the bees may be trapped in the process of covering, it is permitted if this was not his intention. If so, we have come to the opinion of Rabbi Shimon, who is in disagreement with Rabbi Yehuda, said... An unintentional act is permitted, even though it leads inadvertently to a prohibited result. This interpretation of the bride is internally conflicted, half in accordance with Rabbi Yehuda and half in accordance with Rabbi Shimon. The Gemara rejects this argument, and, and how can you understand the bride that follows the view of Rabbi Shimon at all? But didn't Abai and Rabbi both say, Rabbi Shimon concedes, that even an unintentional act is prohibited in the case of Cut off its head and it will not die. Psik reshe veloyamut. That's that's a pretty fundamental thing in the, the Talmud. Psik reshe, they call it psik reshe. Psik reshe veloyamut. If I cut off the head, it will not die. In ordinal Hebrews 197, 1268. Um, in this case a person covering the hive with a mat inevitably traps the bees even if he does not have intent to do so so this act should be prohibited even by Rabbi Shimon rather actually all the brighta is in accordance with Rabbi Huda. and with what case are we dealing here Baha'cha B'maya Eskinan with a beehive that has windows, small openings besides the main opening on top, so that some of the windows remain uncovered, and uncovering the hive does not inev- inevitably trap the bees. And the brighter, you, and in the brighter, you should not say, according to Rabbi Yehuda, provided he does not have intent to trap the bees, which would imply that the deciding factor is the intention of the one who covers them.